and it says, what is the maximum speed with which a 1050 kilogram car can round a turn of a radius 77M on a flat road if the coefficient of static friction between tires and road is 0 0.80? Is the result independent of the mass of the car? I already started on the free body diagram. So we have our normal force going upwards from the road upwards and the center of mass is from the center of the car downwards and we also have static friction going to the right to, towards the center of the circle and I wrote x in the center of the circle what we're going around and I also drew my axis um, going towards the center of the circle and upwards and I also wrote the values that I already have which that's the radius equals 77m and mu equals 0 0.80 our mass equals 1050 kilograms and our velocity, we're looking for that. So I just wrote down velocity equals V. And these are two the two equations that we already know. Static friction equals mu times N and radial acceleration equals V squared over R. I first started with solving for the summation of forces along the x-axis, but I realized I need to solve for the summation of forces along the y-axis first because I got stuck on this part and I know Typically, when I solve the summation of forces along the y-axis, I get what n equals to, and then I plug it into the summation of forces along the x. So the summation of forces along the y-axis equals ma, because f equals mass times acceleration, and the acceleration is zero, so I just cross out the acceleration, and once you multiply n times zero, that equals zero. So summation of forces along the y-axis equals n, because it's going upward, so it's positive, and it's following the axis, and then mg is going downwards, so it's negative because it's going opposite to the axis. So for the summation of forces along the y-axis equals n minus mg, which that equals to zero. So then I just rewrote it, and then I solved for n, so that gives me n equals mg. And then now I'm going to plug it into this part. And what I did here, I solved for the summation of forces. Um, fx equals um, static friction, e which that equals mass times acceleration because I already know force equals mass times acceleration, and there is an acceleration going along the x-axis, so it doesn't cancel out. So static friction equals mass times acceleration, and I already know that um, mu times n is what uh, static friction equals, because that's a, a, an equation that's already given. So I just plug that in, so mu times n equals ma. I already plugged in n equals mg to what we already had, so that'll give me static mu times mg equals m times radial acceleration, and I canceled out my m's because if you divide both sides by n, it just cancels it out. So static mu times g equals radial acceleration, and then I know that I need to solve for velocity because that's what the question is asking me, so I substitute radial acceleration for the equation, the formula, v squared over r, and I get static mu times g equals v squared over r, and I need to isolate my v, so I multiply both sides times r, that gives me v squared equals static mu times g times r, and I square root everything, so I get v equals square root static mu times g times r, and I plug in all the values that the problem gives us, and our static mu is 0 0.80, and our g is 9.81, and the radius is 77. So once I plug all of that into my calculator, I get v equals 24.582 meters per second. And to answer the second part of the question, it says, is the result independent of the mass of the car? And yes, the result is independent of the... This is number 13 on the homework, and it says, at what minimum speed must a roller coaster be traveling when upside down at the top of a circle so that passengers will not fall out? Assume a radius of 7.4 m. The first step is to write down our free body diagram, which would look like this. Um, it has mg from the center of the person, but I just drew a box because it doesn't really matter. Um, I drew it in the center of the box going downwards towards the center of the circle, and I drew an x here because that's where... Um, all the forces are the forces point towards since it's the center of the circle we're rotating around it so that's why with the x there you're supposed to put the x in every problem and then the axis i put it pointing downwards um because your axis is supposed to point towards um wherever the center of your circle is and this one it doesn't really matter the x-axis it doesn't really matter 
because we're not using any forces along the x-axis and then I have the normal force from the bottom of the track to the top. Next, I just wrote down what values the problem already gave us. So our radius is 7.4 and we're solving for our speed, so I just put V. And then this is already given, like this is a formula, we already know this. Um, radial acceleration equals V squared over R. The next step would be to just um, write down the summation of forces along the y-axis. So we already know force equals mass times acceleration, so I put the summation of forces along the x-axis equals mass times acceleration. And we have acceleration, so I don't cancel it out. And then um, I put summation of forces along the y-axis equals n plus mg, because these are both going in the same direction, and it's going along the axis. So we know they're both positive. And I equal that to mass times acceleration, since we got it from here. And since it's at the top and there's a weightless feeling, we know that the normal force is going to be zero. So I just cancel that out. I forgot to add my R for radial acceleration, so I just added it throughout the problem. And so after canceling out the end, that I then I just rewrote mg equals m times radial acceleration and then I divided both sides by m to cancel out the m's so I'm left with g equals radial acceleration um but since we're solving for velocity then I need to find a way to put it in the equation and we know radial acceleration equals velocity squared over r so I substituted it over here so g equals v squared over r and then I multiplied both sides by r so that gives me v squared equals rg and I square rooted the entire thing, and then I get V equals square root of R and G. At this point, it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers to the equation. So I already have my gravity, and that's 9.81, and our radius, it's given to us in the problem, so that's 7.4. So we get velocity equals square root of 7.4 times 9.81, and when I plug that into my calculator, I get 8.520 meters per second. This is number 17 from the homework, and it says, how fast in RPM must a centrifuge rotate if a particle nine centimeter, nine centimeters from the axis of rotation is to experience an acceleration of 115,000 Gs? Since in this problem we don't need a free body diagram, I just went straight to writing down the values that we have. So our radius is nine centimeters, but we need to have in meters. So in meters, that would be 0 0.09 meters. And our acceleration, it tells us over here, it says it's 115,000 Gs. And I already wrote down what we already know, the formula, A equals V squared over R. Since we're solving for rotations per minute, we need to first find our velocity and then change it to RPM. So V squared over R equals radial acceleration. We need to isolate our V, so I multiply both sides times R, and that gives me V squared equals radial acceleration times R. And then I square root everything, and that gives me V equals square root of radial acceleration times R. And now I can start plugging it in. And for my acceleration, we know that it gives us 115,000 Gs, so we write down 115,000, but we need to multiply it times 9.81 since it doesn't just say 115,000 meters per second squared. So we need to multiply by g. So 115,000 times 9.81. And it's also times r. And our r is 0 0.09. And when I plug all of that into my calculator, I get v equals 318.643 meters per second. All we have left to do is change our velocity to RPM. So our first step to doing that is multiplying what we got here, our velocity, which is 318.643. We have to multiply that times one revolution over two pi r. And it's divided by two pi r because that's the circumference of a circle. So we divide by two pi r. And once we do that, we can now start plugging in our values. And so we plug in for the R, it's 0 0.09, so we get 318.643 meters per second times 1 rev over 2 pi times 0 0.09 m. And here we can cancel out the m's because it's being divided by each other, so they just cancel out. So with that, we get 563.484 
but it's still in seconds, so we need to change. It's it's still in revolutions per second, so we need to change it per revolu to revolutions per minute. So to do that, we multiply five hundred sixty three point five hundred sixty three point four eight four revolutions per second times sixty seconds over a minute. So our seconds cancel out, and we're left with three thousand three. Thirty-three thousand eight hundred nine point zero nine five revolutions per minute.